And I got interested in this because uh, one of the new things that we learned in the 2000s, and it wasn't an issue, nobody ever talked about this in the 90s, was that cancer is an obesity related disease. And that's uh, become, you know, as we've had this epidemic, it's become clear, more and more clear that this is the case. So um, the first uh, big acceptance of this wasn't actually till about 2003 when the big, um, the big uh, studies started to come out showing that obesity is actually a huge risk factor for all kinds of cancers. Now it's well accepted. It's actually um, about, you know, almost on par with tobacco as, as a sort of contributor to cancer. So really a large uh, contributor there. And that's how I got interested in this uh, question of what, how, how obesity, uh, you know, because I'm dealing with a lot of obesity, that's how I got interested in the question of cancer. It turns out that the cancer question is actually far more interesting and complex than I had thought, which is where this book takes a bit of a different turn. So it's not mere, it's not just about nutrition. So it does talk about nutrition and fasting and cancer, but the, the first sort of half of the book is really a discussion about what cancer is as a disease. And um, it's not what we thought it was, because obviously it's not just obesity, right? If you smoke, you get lung cancer and that has nothing to do with obesity. So why, why do we get cancer? Like what is cancer? And that's the real important question that again, we never ask. So it's just like we talk about obesity, what causes weight gain? We never think about that because we think it's all about calories, right? Um, this is the same question, what is cancer? And, and this is where uh, we've actually made a lot of changes that people have not probably recognized. So I sort of go through the history of the way we think about cancer, that is um, not as different diseases, but as a single disease, um, because the different cancers are quite different. Breast cancer is different than a melanoma, which is different from liver cancer. So they're different, but in, since about 2000, people have started to look at how cancers behave as a group. And that's led to some real revolutions in the way we think about cancer, which is leading to real revolutions in the way we treat cancer. So I sort of detail there's how there's sort of been three big revolutions in the, the, the paradigm that the understanding of cancer. So we started out by thinking of cancer as a disease of excessive growth. So you have a cell grows too much, right? So you have a lung cancer, uh, which is, starts as a cell, turns into a cancer, grows too much, and then spreads, right? So it's just a, a cell that grows too much. And that paradigm of cancer leads you to the logical treatment. If cancer is too much growth, kill it. That's the bottom line. So you develop things like surgery, so you cut it out. You used to develop things like radiation, where you burn it, or you develop things like chemotherapy, where it's just a poison. It's a selective toxin to the cancer. So cutting, burning, and poisoning. It's it it worked great. Like honestly, it was a huge sort of leap forward in treatment. Before that, there was no treatment. After that, there was all this treatment. So a lot of cancers got better. It's still the backbone of our therapy today. Cell that grows too much, kill it. But this paradigm started to reach its limits by the 70s because we had already done the studies, looked for these poisons, looked for different ways to use radiation and all this sort of stuff. But we're the lim reaching the limits of how far that paradigm of understanding can take.